Welcome everyone to our CFE info session. My name is Iyad Murtada I'm, I'm, and I am authorized trainer with the Association of Certified Fraud Examiner to teach the CFE exam review course in UAE, Oman and Malaysia. And I am here to help you and guide you over the process of how can you prepare for the CFE exam and how can you pass the CFE exam within five days, within four weeks or within six months, whatever style that you would like to take. But before we start, it's very important for us to recognize the value of the certificate because we have so many professionals and I can see it all over the internet saying, should I take CIA or should I take CFE or should I take any other certificate? So even when they come to fraud, they ask me, yeah, should I take CAMS or should I take the CFE? Should I take CFE or should I take another financial crime certificate? And always my answer that CFE is the gold standard in the industry. Why? If you are taking something related to CAMS, you are more focusing on anti-money laundering, which is great if you are working in that domain. If you are taking certificates related to financial crimes, you are more focusing on that domain, banking, healthcare. But with CFE, you are focusing on the concept of fraud investigation all over. So if you are in banking, government, if you are private sector, if you are in the public sector, wherever you are, even if you own your own business, you work in finance, accounting, HR, all these areas under the CFE is covered because it's focusing on the principles related to fraud examination. I have some of my friends who are the head of the fraud department for the last 25 years. They say, yeah, look, I am 55 years old. I'm going to retire in a couple of years. Should I take this CFE? Is the CFE important for me? And always when they speak about that, I tell them always about you know, the power of the certificate. Based on NCFE research 2020 related to the compensation guide, you can see that certified fraud examiners, they earn 34% more than non-certified fraud examiners. So the research, if you speak with all the recruitment companies, they will tell you, if you have CFE, you are going to find much better job opportunity. It's considered the gold standard in the industry. But even more, if you are actually in Africa or Middle East, 63% your salary will be higher. So the value of the CFE is very important for you to be able to actually improve in your career and earn more money on the job. But it's not only about that. It's about showing to the board of directors, to the audit committee, that you are the right person, that you have the proper knowledge and understanding for you to be able to carry out the investigation based on the best practices all over the world. So when we are speaking about you know, fraud and investigation, it's very important for us to go and look at the recent trends that are happening. And ACFE, they do so many research. One of them is the report to the nations that they published in 2020, which is, will explain to you exactly what are the frauds that are happening all over the world. When we look at it, we can see what are the different categories of fraud. And this is what we focus on when we are teaching you to become certified fraud examiner. So someone will say, Iyad, I need to investigate fraud. I say, before you investigate any fraud, you need to understand the different types of fraud. So when we are speaking about the fraud, we speak about the fraud tree, which is we are speaking about corruption, we are speaking about asset misappropriation and fraudulent financial statements. These are the three types of fraud that we need to look at when we are investigating. So we need to ask ourselves, this business executive, which method he used to be able to steal actually from the organization, to be able to do fraud? Was he manipulating the financial records? Or was he actually manipulating the actually uh, reports and be able to take some of the inventories? Or he was actually taking a bribe from uh, uh, the vendor. So we need, it's very important for any fraud case, before we start a fraud case, we need to identify the category, the, the schemes that he's doing. Why? Because based on that, look where we come now to the other point. Based on that, from legal standpoint, we need to speak with the legal department and we need to ask them from legal standpoint, what are the legal elements needed for us to prove that he actually did something that we can take a case against him? Because as a fraud investigator, always you need to follow the law inside your country and based on your organization to look at what kind of evidence you need to collect when you are doing your investigation. So at the end of the day, you have the proper evidence to take legal action against him. Now, someone will say, yeah, but wait. We are not sure if we are going to take legal action against him or not. The principle of fraud examination will say, 
regardless if you are going to take a legal action against the person or you are not going to take a legal action. If you are doing fraud investigation, you need to assume that litigation will follow. You need to assume that we are going to take a case against the person. And you need to understand from legal side what are the evidence you need to collect, how you need to collect them, how you need to document them properly for you to be able to actually have all the evidence that you need to have at the end when you write your fraud examination report to be able to submit it to the legal department, the audit committee, to the fraud committee in case they would like to take action against the person in the future. So this is why when we look at it, we can see we have corruption. When we speak about corruption, we have different categories. We have conflict of interest, we have bribery, we have illegal gratuity, which is illegal tip giving to someone working in government or economic extortion. You are forcing someone to do something that he should not. Or when we speak about asset appropriation, we can see that someone can steal actually the cash or the inventory inside the organization. And we, when we are speaking about that, always we, we have three ways of doing it. We call it skimming, someone stealing the money before entering the organization, or larceny, someone stealing the money inside the organization, or fraudulent disbursement, someone stealing the money going outside the organization. So we have different techniques, and these are very important for us to understand and figure out. Look what we are going to teach you in the CFE. We are going to teach you what are these techniques that fraudsters they use, what are the schemes they use, what are the approaches that they use. Then we are going to tell you about what are the red flags that you need to look for to identify these schemes. And then we are going to discuss the preventive and deductive controls that you need to help the organization in establishing to ensure this fraud will not happen again in the future. So it's a very interesting subject because we will go over everything from sales, from billing, from payroll, from expense reimbursements, different operations happening inside the organization. We are going to go step by step and understand how the fraud is happening in every division and what kind of control we need to implement in place to ensure that this fraud will not happen in the future. Finally, we speak about the financial statement fraud. How can someone overstate the assets or understate their ability? How can someone manipulate the, the valuation of the inventory or account receivables? So it's financial statement fraud is very important. You can see with the recent trends that happened with Wirecard and all this uh, you know, fraud that's happening all over the world. So we will teach you exactly what you need to look at. Someone will say, yeah, but wait, wait, I don't have accounting background. How can I understand the financial statement fraud? We are not going to ask you to know accounting more than understanding the basics. And we will teach you the basics. In the exam, they are going to not focus on the financial statement. They are going to focus on the financial statement fraud. Understanding exactly what are the main concepts for you to be able to figure out the different schemes when we are speaking about financial fraud. So these are the main concepts that are covered in the CFD exam. So by the end of uh, the course, and once you are certified, you will be able to figure out inside the organization each one of these schemes, we are going to teach you one by one, and you will be able to figure out how to investigate it, how to help the organization in ensuring that it will not happen in the future. Now, when we are speaking about fraud, why fraud is so important? Why we have so many individuals recently are coming to take the CFE? Because they say 5% of the revenue of the organization every year is going to fraud. So organizations, they are concerned. It's a huge amount of money. And the issue with the fraud cases, based on ACFE report, that they say typical fraud cases lasted 14 months before deduction. Imagine 40, about a year. So fraud is happening for one year and no one discovered that. And this is why we need, as a fraud examiner, to be able to help the organization have the proper system in place. So we can help them in conducting fraud risk assessments, and we help them in actually ensuring that they have the proper fraud risk management to ensure we will be able to get indication of fraud at the early stages. Because they say the longer the fraud happens inside the organization, the more the damage. And when they looked at the research about the recovery, these 5% of fraud, are we recovering them? They discover more than 50% of the money is not recovered, zero recovered. Only around 10 to 15%, they were able to have full recovery. But most of the money is actually gone. So it's not about catching the guy. It's not about solving the case. We are not in a movie. It's about how can we ensure that we will be able to help the organization at the early stage in uncovering the fraud, 
And when we uncover the fraud, we will be able to recover the money and solve the case. It's not about taking the legal action against the person. What's the benefit if you take an action against someone and he's in prison, but the money is gone? It's about figuring out the proper way of helping the organization achieve the objectives. And this is why we speak in the uh, CFE class about the investigation strategy, about how can you plan for the investigation in the proper way, about what is the outcome, what is the need that we need to achieve from this investigation. Also, when we speak about cases related to fraud, we can see that number one issue happening today inside the organization is what we call corruption. You know what I call it? I call it the secret doors. Why they are secret doors? Because they are not documented. You will not be able to find them in the files, in the documents. You will not be able to find evidence about them. They are secret doors. Individuals under the table, they are actually taking bribes or they are having conflict of interest. And you will not be able to uncover that unless you have someone tipping us. What's the meaning tipping us? reporting, calling the hotline, saying that we would like to report a conflict of interest or we would like to report a bribe. Or if you discover close relationship between the vendor and between the purchasing manager, for example. And this is where corruption is a very hard for us, number one, to uncover, number two, to investigate. What if you discover that the purchasing manager two years ago, he was doing something? How can you prove it? The contract was signed, everything was okay. Now you need to dig back and figure out exactly what happened. And these are the issues we will discuss in the class. What is the proper way of investigation? investigating not only fraud schemes, but also corruption? Also, we speak about how the asset uh, uh, misappropriation is happening and how can we actually deal with it and with a financial uh, statement fraud. Now, when we are speaking about uh, uh, fraud, it's very important inside the organization for you, working in compliance, working in internal audit, working in different departments, to ensure that there is a proper fraud awareness training, that the employees inside the organization, all of them are aware of what is considered fraud and what is not considered fraud, and they know exactly how to report fraud and to where to report fraud, and that, that no one is going to take uh, revenge from them. So question for you, do you have hotline inside your organization? You can write in the chat box. Do you have a hotline to report actually the cases related to fraud? Because they discover that hotline is very important. They discover more than 50% of the cases are in so many countries are discovered through the hotline. So hotline is very important. ACFE report of research said that 43% of the schemes were deducted through tips. So someone called the hotline and reported to the hotline. So this is why it's very important for you to have a hotline inside your organization. And what kind of hotline? Are you going to have phone, uh, telephone hotline? Or are you going to have a form or email? Or what is the proper system that you are going to have it for the hotline? And these are all the issues also we speak about in the class. We speak in the class about what is the proper fraud risk management system? What is the proper compliance and ethic system that you need to have inside the organization to ensure that a fraud is actually reduced to the, uh, the minimum level? How can we manage the risk related to fraud? Now, someone will come and say, yeah, so uh, we are speaking about investigation because so many, they tell me, yeah, so this is an investigation certificate. I tell them, no. They say, well, what, what do you mean it's not investigation certificate? I say, what we teach you in the class is not investigation. You can take so many courses in the world and you understand investigation. You can take investigation related to crimes. You can take investigation related to sexual harassment. You can take investigation related to misconduct, related to compliance issue. Here, what we are focusing in the CFE is focusing on the fraud examination methodology. The meaning, when we are dealing with cases related only to fraud, what is the proper way of actually planning the investigation, of collecting the evidence in the right way, of handling the cases? So always we are focusing on the fraud examination methodology, dealing with the fraud uh, uh, cases, not dealing with investigation in general. So this is how we start by figuring out who should be part of the investigation team. We need to identify at the beginning of the investigation who should be part of the investigation team and who should not be part of the investigation team. So let me ask you a question. And this is, by the way, question the exam. At the beginning of the investigation, should we get the supervisor of the suspect as part of our investigation team at the beginning of the investigation? What do you think? 
you can write in the chat box. Should we get the supervisor of the suspect part of, in part of our investigation team? Some of you are saying no, some of you are saying yes. Okay, I'm glad that most of you, you are saying no. Good, you answered the correct answer in the exam. Definitely you pass the exam if you answer it correctly. We should not get the supervisor involved at the beginning. Why? Because we just started the investigation. We are not sure. Maybe he's involved in the fraud. So this is why we need to decide exactly when we start with the first stage of planning the investigation, who should be part of the investigation team? Who should be informed about the, uh, the investigation? So this is very important. After that, we need to figure out exactly what is the proper way of collecting the evidence, what kind of evidence we need. We need to figure out what is the proper way of analyzing this evidence and how can we document this evidence in our report. And then how can we issue these, uh, these uh, uh, fraud reports at the end. So we need to have the proper way of obtaining the evidence, analyzing the evidence, and documenting the evidence so later we can publish the report with all the evidence that we have. But there is a very important thing that we need to learn. How can we conduct fraud interviews? Because conducting a fraud interview is different than conducting any other interview. This is non, it's not an, a non-compliance interview. This is not an internal audit interview. This is not HR interview. There are certain principles that we need to understand and figure out when we are doing fraud-related interview. And there are, by the way, some legal issues that you need to be aware of. Because if you do an illegal violation to the rights of the person under investigation, he can actually sue you. He can take a case against you. And at the end, you are going to lose your fraud case. So you take him to court for fraud case, and he will take you to court with, uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, illegal practices that you use. So someone will say, Iyad, what, what do you mean by illegal practices someone can take? Can someone actually do illegal practices during the interview? I said, of course. What you, you can do, for example, you can say, look, I have some evidence showing that you have committed the fraud. So the guy, he actually committed the fraud. And because you told him you have some evidence, he will come and he say, yes, I did the fraud. Then you go to court. When you go to the court, the judge will ask you, so what evidence you have when you were doing the interview with him and you told him you have evidence? You say, <laughs> sorry, judge, I have nothing. I was just lying to him, telling him that we have evidence against him so he can admit. And look, he admitted. He said he did it. The judge will say, what? You were lying to him during the interview to get his admission? If you are doing this, the meaning his admission is not acceptable in court. You are not allowed to lie to the suspect. So this is where you need to understand what are the proper way of conducting this interview. You are not allowed to tell the suspect you are not allowed to leave the room because in that way you make him your prisoner. Even you are not allowed to tell the suspect, listen, the sooner you tell me what happened, the sooner you can leave. Because in that way, again, you are making him your prisoner. So this is where we teach you all the fundamentals and understanding of the proper investigation technique when you are handling uh, you know, fraud interviews. Also, after handling the case and helping the organization in writing the report and recovering the money, we need to help the organization in implementing the proper controls in place to ensure that these fraudsters, when they are going to try again to do fraud, we will be able to catch them at the early stages. So we need to understand what are the proper preventive and deductive techniques, what are the proper fraud risk management and compliance and ethics and governance that the organization should have to ensure fraud will not happen. So look, the, these issues we discussed, they are very interesting issues and they are focusing on different domains. We are not only speaking about one domain. This is why ACFE created this certificate, which is Certified Fraud Examiner, where it's covering different areas related to fraud prevention and deterrence, financial transaction, fraud investigation, and legal elements of fraud. And actually, the content, like we discussed, they are really massive. If you want to actually study them, they are inside the Fraud Examiner's Manual, which is more than 2,000 pages. You need to study it and understand it for you to be certified for the examiner. I, myself, when I was preparing for the certificate, I read it for me to be able to pass the exam. And it took me six months preparation for me to be able to understand it all, answer the 1,500 questions, and then get ready to take the exam. And I was able to pass the exam from the first time. But it took me a lot of time to understand the concept and figure the legal part of it, understand you know, the different schemes, and then actually practice the uh, questions and take the exam. Now, if you would like to be certified for the examiner, 
you need to actually take these four exams. Every exam is actually two hours. You have 100 questions to answer. So you need to score 75% for you to pass in every sections of these sections. So we have, you know, the, the, uh, fraud prevention, deterrence, financial transaction, fraud investigation, and legal elements. There is no order. There's no, it's not like you need to take this before this. You can take them in any order that you want, but you need to actually complete three, all of them within 30 days, and you need to score more than 75% in every one. The meaning you need to answer 75 questions correctly in every one for you to be able to pass the exam. There is no negative marking. The meaning if you answer any question wrong in the exam, it's not going to be uh, against you. And after you complete all of them and you pass them, you need to make sure that you have all the proper requirements. So what is the requirement for you to be certified for the examiner? You need to have a college degree, university degree, and plus two years experience related to fraud. Now someone will say, yeah, what's the meaning related to fraud? The meaning, if you are in HR, you have experience related to fraud. If you are in finance, you have experience related to fraud. If you are in any domain, definitely you have experience related to fraud. So in general, you are required for two years experience plus a college degree. Someone will say, yeah, I don't have two years of experience, no issue. If you don't have two years of experience, you can take the certificate, take the exam, pass the exam, and after that, you can get two years of experience and then you get your certificate. Myself, when I took CFE, I don't have two years of experience. So I took the CFE, after I had two years of experience, I got the certificate, so it's okay. What if I don't have college degree? It's okay, if you don't have college degree, ACF you will say, as long as you have eight years of experience, it will count, or maybe if you have other certificates like ACCA or CIA or CBA, also they will count that. The most important thing that you need to look at the educational requirements. In general, 99% of the individuals that I know that they apply, they have the requirements. So most likely you have the requirement if you have some work and some uh, uh, professional education. Now let's understand the steps. What you need to be, do for you to be certified for the examiner. Number one, you need to join the ACFE. You need to be an ACFE member. After you join the ACFE, and you need to actually prepare for the CFE exam. So there are different ways of preparing for the CFE exam. You can actually buy the fraud manual and study from it. Oh my God. You are going to study 2,000 pages plus, which is going to be very hard. And then you are going to take the exam. From my experience, it's very, hard, very unlikely for you to pass the exam. So at least you need to buy the fraud examination manual plus the CFE prop course. You say, yeah, wait, wait, what's the meaning of CFE prop course? The CFE prop course is actually the questions and answers, 1,500 questions and answers that ACFE is providing you that you need to practice for all the sections we discussed here. So you are prepared to actually pass the CFE exam. So these are very important questions you need to go over and practice. Some will say, the same questions are going to come in the exam. No, no, no. Similar questions. But they are very important for you to focus on. After that, you need to actually apply for the CFE exam. So this is where the step will come, where you need to submit your CFE application. So with the CFE application, they will ask you to, sub, uh, to give them your photo. They will ask them to provide your uh, university degree and to provide your uh, job description. They will not ask for uh, experience certificate, but they will ask you for your job description. And after that, you go and take the exam and pass the exam, and then you will be certified. So the process usually, it will take, it depends. If you do self-study, it may take you one year. If you do it with a class, it depends on the class that you take, you can pass the exam between five days to one month. So it's based on the method that you study and how much effort you want to put in it. But these are actually the steps of you to become certified. Now, if you want to be certified with us, if you want to attend our class and you get certified, you have two methods, two approaches. The first one is attending our virtual class. So currently we are offering virtual classes where you can join us over four weeks and within four weeks, you will pass the CFE exam with no issue. The way we teach it is very interesting. We deliver the class over four weeks, where every week we will teach you, uh, by the way, the timing here is based on Dubai time. So just for you, if you are attending from all over the world, this is based on Dubai time. So we teach you the subject over one week, three days a week, uh, two hours in the evening, from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. And then you go practice the exams related to the sections we teach you, and then over the weekend, you take the exam. 
and then the next week you will come you study with us three days a week then you take the exam over the weekend then the next uh, uh, week you study three days a week then you take the exam over the weekend so at the end of the four weeks you are certified we already have more than 200 delegates over the last two months who actually took our virtual classes and they passed the exam following this method 200 so it was really interesting and this is by the way this is the first time we delivered online before for the last six years i was delivering face to face but we started uh, delivering this uh, two months ago when corona started and it was a big success we have massive success with it and our delegates are so happy with this approach why this approach is very successful because it's really ineffective for us to deliver for you a full day of training what we are doing we are delivering the training where we are doing every uh, week two hours day in day out so in that way you are really relaxed you understand the concept and at the same time you are going home back and you are practicing the uh, questions so at the end when you reach the weekend you are ready you can pass the exam with no issue so this is the first approach if you would like to actually pass the exam with us with our virtual classes now there is something very important virtual classes are only available for delegates who are attending our classes from the country we teach they they are uae they are qatar they are uh, oman and they are malaysia if you are from these countries you can attend our virtual classes but if you are not from these countries and i can see some delegates attending from all over the world you are not allowed to join our virtual classes but we have good news you can join our live classes so we are starting from september conducting live classes we have live classes in september we have live classes in november and in december so we have three options for you you can fly over to dubai and you can attend our classes so the classes are going to be done over five days so this is the other advantage compared to studying with us over four weeks here within five days face to face we will teach you all the subjects quickly you practice in the evening and then you take the exam next day in the morning so this is our approach our classes will start from eight to five you practice a little bit in the evening you sleep next day you come in the morning at eight you take the exam from eight to ten then we have our classes from ten to six then you sleep you take it you say yeah is this possible can someone pass the exam in this way yes don't worry we already have more than 700 delegates who passed the exam with us within this method of five days so before it's not four weeks before five days you pass the exam with us now if you want to take it here are the different packages that you have so you can assess your cost if you are doing self-study that you are gonna actually have to pay for the acfe membership you are which is uh, you know a uh, hundred and ninety five dollars you have to pay for the exam fees you have to pay for cfp prop course uh, which is you are going to get the questions the practice exam you'll get money back guarantee you will get the flashcards and then you get the fraud examination manual and you get the cfe workbook now all of it if you buy them all together you get them at a discounted price of 1451 but this will take you between three to six months self-study which is going to be very hard but it's not only uh, you know self-study is not about like oh yeah i did the self-study and i'm so happy it's about remember we don't teach the cfe uh, course for you just to be certified and you say look yeah i'm certified for the examiner we do it so at the end of the day you know br uh, the practical uh, knowledge the techniques that you need to carry out when you are conducting investigation it's not about going and showing off that you are certified if i give you a fraud case do you know how to handle it or you are going to go back to your book trying to remember so we teach you the topics over 30 hours where we focus on helping you understand the concepts in a real life scenarios and focus on the questions that you are going to get in the exam so you are going to get two in one now if you attend our online classes you are going to get everything the same like self-study plus you are going to get an, an, an instructor which is i teach the classes myself and you are going to have me teaching the classes within with you within four weeks like uh, we discussed before and the cost will be which is very good 1994 dollars so the cost is really really very close to the self-stop within four weeks you can pass the exam now if you would like to go for the actual you know uh, uh, live course you can join our live courses like i say in september november or in december and you can actually attend it for 2999 now i have good news for you that currently because of the corona and because of everything happening 
we are giving a special offer until the 1st of September, until the 1st of September, that you can join our live courses in the same price, at the same price exactly of our online classes. So if you would like anywhere in the world to attend our live classes, you can join them for only 1,994. This is until the 1st of September. You can select for September, November, or December, and you can register for them. And in case, let's say you decided to fly for September, but your airport is not opening because of Corona, we can move you to November or December, don't worry. So at the same time, these classes are gonna be streamed, stream, so that way you can attend them. So don't worry, we can help you if you would like to join our classes. But for our online courses, we are not allowed to accept any delegates from outside the territories that we teach based on the SAP policy. But for live classes, you, you are more than welcome to fly over and attend our classes live in Dubai. So these are the, the packages that we have. Now for me, let me give you an understanding of exactly how I run my classes. Do you know what we have done over the last couple of years? So over the last couple of years, I have conducted over the last six years, more than 50 CFE exam review course. We are the largest outside US. And we actually have massive success. You can see the amount of delegates that we had. So far, we have more than 1,000 delegates attended our classes all over the world. Just, uh, you know, these are the live classes. We have our uh, last live class we, we done last year in December. We had 72 delegates attending our class. So our, about our passing rate, we have a passing rate between 85 to 90%. So someone will say, yeah, so not everyone is passing the exam. I say, if you don't follow our strategy and policy, you will not pass the exam. If you come and you decide you are going to take the exam later, you are not going to pass. You need to be serious. You will come, follow our approach, and you will be able to clear the exam. And if you would like to take the exam with us online, also, these are the last two classes that we have conducted. And we have, in every one of these classes, more than 100 delegates. I'm sorry, they can't fit in one screen. You know, with Zoom, you know, we will have to go with multiple tabs to see all of them. But it was amazing experience for all these delegates from all over the world joining us and being able to actually clear the exam, which is was very interesting experience for me to teach the subject and for them to actually learn the subject over a, a, a four weeks period and, and succeed in taking the exam and passing the exam. So if you would like to join any of these courses, you can go to our website, openthinking.ae, and you can get all the information about it. You know, we uh, have worked very hard to make sure that the process of teaching the CFE exam is effective for all of you to be able to understand. And at the same time, my approach of teaching is very direct. What I focus on, I focus on very simple thing holding you understand the concept in easy to understand way i am direct i'm not going to waste your time and be like this concept no i direct tell you this is the concept this is what you need to focus on this is how the idea need to uh, uh, you look at it when you are looking at the exam this is how the idea, the idea you need to look at it when you are actually uh, practicing it in real life and at the end of the day you are going to have interesting experience you are going to learn the knowledge and you are going to pass the cfe exam and you are going to say, well, it was really a valuable investment for me because I know the amount is not really small. It's going to be an investment, but you are going to get the rate of return from the knowledge you are going to gain and from the global certificate that you are going to earn. So this is, in summary, you know, all the information that you need to know to decide if this is the right certificate for you to take or not and at the same time to assess exactly what is the proper approach for you. Not everyone would like to attend face-to-face. -face. Not everyone would like to attend online classes. I have some of my delegates, they say, no, yeah, you would like face-to-face. -face. Online is not effective. Some delegates, they say, no, no, no. We enjoy your online classes. They are much better than face-to-face. -face. We will never attend face-to-face -face again. So we have proven over the last two months that online classes are very effective. And at the same time, face-to-face -face classes are very effective. So it's up to you to decide what is the proper approach, the proper method, or maybe you would like to do self-study. So in that way, you can go buy the books and study on your own. So good luck with preparing for the exam and good luck in becoming certified fraud examiner. All right, so this is the end of the session. Let me stop the recording.